This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post, brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 12th of May 2020 and I am 2J. I'm JM. And I am GK. And in case you missed the headlines, here they are. In the Daily Nation, how Uhuru cooked Ruto's goose. Mm. In the Standard, Uhuruto's stormy divorce. Mm -hmm. And in the Star, 22 pro-DP Ruto senators reject Uhuru changes. And other stories. These headlines, <laughs> it needs to get uh, shorter. <laughs> it does. It does. Maybe that's the star style. Yes. So, Terrible. of course, yeah. I think at this point we all know what occurred yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, we had changes in the Senate, a replacement of the majority <clears throat> leader and the majority whip. So, uh, Murkomen and Kihika are, have been displaced just from their leadership roles, not from their roles as senators. Mm. So, for example, in the star, they outline the steps that were taken to get to this point. Yeah. First, they talk about the reorganization of the Jubilee organ, the national management committee mm -hmm. and then second they talk about what occurred yesterday the um, shift in leadership and then third I guess they're talking about the potential impeachment that may come from this but also they Im they bring an important question to light the fact that now the ball is in Lusaka's court because mm -hmm. yes the majority who were in attendance yesterday voted for this shift but it still has to be approved by Lusaka yes so on mm -hmm. one hand we have more comment who is questioning the attendance of the people at the parliamentary group. Yes. Yeah. But if you ask me, if Kanze Dennis said that 20 people were in attendance... 20 people were there. 20, 20 people were in people attendance. Were in yeah, attendance. so he's Very saying it, only 11 Jubilee and 3 from Kanu. Exactly. Which is uh, less than the threshold needed of 18. 18, of exactly. the 35 senators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's in the, the ball is in Lusaka's court. Mm -hmm. However, there have been lots of debates. Yeah. Uh, one of them is, is all this machinery necessary to fight small fish? such as uh, Murkomen mm. and mm. Keheka. Some people are saying that the president should be using his energy elsewhere. Mm. However, I, f I feel different. I feel like if this is a precursor for impeachment things, yeah. then clearing the way in the Senate is the way to begin. Yeah. Um, if it's waste, it, if it's trying to pass BBI in a simpler way, this is probably <laughs> it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remove the people who are not speaking in one voice um, yeah. and uniting for you. Um, so what do we think uh, you know, of, of Uhuru's move recently? F first of all, a better headline for the star would have been yeah. no turning back. Mm. As simple as that. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, uh, you know, I think yesterday Uhuru crossed the Rubicon. Yeah. Uh, and that's a moment in history when Julius Caesar crossed a river uh, then known as the Rubicon mm. um, and that sparked uh, a civil war, uh, the Roman civil war and eventually mm. he became dictator of all Rome. Yes. And, and maybe this is where we're headed with uh, the president and this is a, a wonderful thing in my opinion. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll say four things here, four yeah. things about uh, this latest move. Yeah. Mm. First of all, Uhuru is building consensus through dominance. We usually say that in damaging ignorance. Um, second, um, politics is a thieves game. Mm. So to the point that you, you, you raised uh, 2J, uh, uh, you know, the, the numbers, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Let me just leave it at that. Tell them to move no, on. No, move on, move on. They'll get over it. Number three, in the ruthless arena of politics, Weakness isn't pitied, it mm. is exploited. Mm. And that's precisely what's going to happen now to those who find themselves on the wrong side mm. of, uh, of, of, of the political divide. And, and the last thing that Uhuru is telling uh, Kenyans and the Ruto coalition is, uh, it, it, is, is if you don't like it, you can sit on a pin mm -hmm. or maybe get a green card and move to America <laughs> where your life could be happier ever after. Well, don't move to America. <laughs> Politics yeah, is just, exactly. it's just <laughs> getting <laughs> interesting. No, but it's also just getting very interesting. I think, you know, we've been saying that Corona has killed politics, but we're seeing very mm -hmm. clear moves here for a strategy that's being executed. Yeah. 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 And so there's no right or wrong. It's whether are you in or are you out? And mm -hmm. are you in on the right side? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my caution that I'm trying to hold on to is that we should not underestimate this DP. Yeah, and is he the type of enemy a political enemy that um, you want to wants. have. But, but the yeah. DP doesn't have any notable allies with him, you know? That is true. He's, he hasn't got any, he's, he's only, it's only him and, and foot and soldiers. And his Twitter followers. Yeah, his rank and file. And Twitter followers yeah. who let down Peter Kenneth in 2013. <laughs> didn't come out to vote for him. 
So where are you going with Twitter followers? Oh, no, Twitter is uh, not real uh, life. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not real life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's see where this uh, play, how this plays out mm. in the next few days. Who do we give our winning headline? Mm. Bear in mind, we have a three-part yes. criteria that yeah. we use. We ask ourselves, is it topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? I quite like the nation. Nation, yeah, yeah. Ruto's goose being cooked. Mm. You don't like Uhuruto? Uhuruto is nah. strongly divorced. Divorce. Oh, no. no? Okay, so there you have it. And the star, we are made a change. Yeah. Yes, so yes, yes. We're no giving, turning back. No turning back. But we're giving it to the Daily Nation. Mm. That's our winning headline. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, where we also have a three-part criteria. We ask ourselves, is it humorous or dry? Mm -hmm. Is it satirical or pessimistic? And is it effective or, or just, just plain, plain lazy? lazy? Who shall we begin with? The Daily Nation. Okay, in the Daily Nation we have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a caricature of our president, Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm. And he's holding a very big pencil on a jubilee piece of paper. And it's and he is saying, Murkomen toe the party line. Mm. And then you have Murkomen there with his squiggly piece of paper. <laughs> and you have a very studious <laughs> Gideon Moy <laughs> looking very neat. Yeah. And, and on his piece of paper, he has not only towed the line, he has put a smiley face. <laughs> whereas Murkomen is being defiant and has a squiggly one. <laughs> yep. um, and I think it's just that thing, you know, if you are not articulating the party's voice mm -hmm. um, and you're only yeah. choosing one side of the party yeah. in which yeah. to articulate, this is what happens. Yeah. Undermining the president exactly. from within the party, yeah. from the government. Yeah. This is what happens. Yeah, get in line yeah, or you'll be forced in line. Absolutely. So, so I think... Yeah, funny. Yeah, I like, like it, cartoon. funny, funny yeah. cartoon. Yeah. And I like yeah. that Gideon is really like making this comeback here. He, he does is. the best caricature of Gideon with the eyebrow, the preppy look. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So interesting. So we, we put have it on the parking bay. Yes, mm -hmm. put it in the parking. In the standard, we have Gado, and Gado has drawn a caricature of a half prince. Kenyatta and Moy, mm. or it's Kenyatta with Moy's teeth. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> and it says Kanu will rule for 100 years. Mm. He's holding yeah. the rungu and he has his. President crown Kenyatta on. is coming out in his full colors. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. As, as a student of, of Moy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's it's uh, no gloves. Uh, yeah. All glo gloves off for, yeah. for, the, for the remaining two and a half years. I yeah. mean, when I saw this, it reminded yeah. me, you know, maybe he's rebuilding this gift that his father gave him that he, you know, kind of destroyed so mm. maybe Kanu mm. will come mm. back to what it used to be well if it is Kanu reloaded we hope that this phase will be the best phase mm. of the yeah. ones that have preceded it very true absolutely in the star we have aha uh -huh, slumber party a jubilee <laughs> slumber party perhaps in Ishawari. <laughs> and we have a caricature of um Uhuru Kenyatta in mm. bed he has a pillow you have caricature of Rilo Odinga and then you have a caricature of Gideon Moy in his Kanu pajamas and then on the edge being squeezed out is a caricature of the deputy president Ruto mm. and the caption there is can you believe this <laughs> and can you is spelt like Kanu. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And his bags and are packed and at the door. His bags yeah. are packed and he has a question, <laughs> mark. <laughs> a question mark. He's like, where have all these people come from? We started off as two. How is he surprised, really? Now there's, there's two more. Oh, goodness. Two more. I there. quite like this. And in fact, really you know what? It. I think this goes back to, you <clears throat> would almost call this a series of what um, Ozan has been doing. Because I yeah. think mm -hmm. it started with the two of them in bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Ryla got into the bed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now Gideon's got it into, into the, bed. the bed. And yeah. Yeah. progressively, <laughs> Ruth is getting more and more surprised. Like, how did you not see this coming? Yeah. It's becoming a crowded field. And guys, I don't think we should be very uh, sure that this is the actual formation given that That's the true. political party's tribunal That's has true. put a hold mm. on uh, Kanu and Jubilee oh, actually yes. forming a coalition. A coalition. Yeah. Yeah. So that one is still on, is pending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But interesting, who do we give our winning cartoon? The star. Yeah. 100%. Star. I love it. The yeah. star gives us our winning cartoon. Slumber mm. Party. What is our final thought? And now our final thought on day two of Rivalries Week, where we're going to look at some of the rivalries in history that spurred innovation, thought and change. Today, we're going to look at the War of the Currents, which was between Tesla and Edison. So this decisive battle took place in the 1800s. On one side, you have the celebrated inventor, Thomas Edison. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you have his former employee, Nikola Tesla. And they were fighting over the alternating current, AC, and the direct current, DC. Mm. So both the AC and DC describe types of current flow in a circuit, so in an electrical system. Mm. The direct current, um, in a direct current, the electrical charge current flows only in one direction. It flows direct from point A to point B. Yeah. Mm. Um, the electric charge in an alternating current, like the name says, um, it changes direction periodically, so it can go back and forth. Mm. 
Mm. So if we were to just, you know, have a popularity contest, Thomas Edison would probably win by a landslide versus Nikola Tesla. Mm. Mm. And that's probably because from an early age, a lot of people were told that Thomas Edison was one of the greatest inventors that ever lived. Mm. But Nikola Tesla, on the other hand, is a name that was only heard by few. And I'd say that only up until recently. Mm. And that's despite the fact that Tesla invented or developed the ideas behind the X-ray, the remote control, radio, the electric motor, and many other um, items before mm. many other people. <clears throat> so Edison, after creating the world's first practical um, light bulb, he needed a system to support it. And so he was a propon proponent of the DC system, that's a one-way system. Mm. And so he started building these power plants all over the US to support this infrastructure. But the DC system had drawbacks. It could not transmit over long distances, and so you had to have these um, power plants within a mile of customers. Mm. So this involved more plants, more generators, more copper wiring, and overall it was expensive. So we see that by 1888, Edison Electric was struggling to meet demand. Tesla, on the other hand, in 1884, was a young Serbian physicist and mathematician, and he came to work with Edison on ideas on how to expand the AC, that's the back and forth, in terms of motors and generators, mm -hmm. because he found that they would be more efficient, they would be more cheaper, and they would be more reliable than the DC system. So Tesla pitched his ideas to Edison, but Edison believed that the AC system was too dangerous and too uncontrollable. So Tesla decides to leave Edison and he sets up his own um, company to develop the AC system further. Mm -hmm. And he quickly attracts a lot of investment from another rival of Edison's, a man called George Westinghouse. Mm. But what Edison decides to do <coughs> is launch this vicious smear campaign um, to discredit the AC system. Yeah. So for example, he showed how dogs and cattle could be killed by the AC system <laughs> but remain unharmed by the DC system. Oh. He fueled media scare stories of accidental electrocutions caused by faulty AC systems. Mm. He even helped the New York um, state authorities find a new way of executing prisoners using the AC system. Mm. So one of the first people who, who was ever convicted used in, using electricity was killed using the AC electric chair. Wow. So in the end, you see one of the major reasons that Edison is praised and Tesla is underappreciated comes not from the idea generation or the um, creation of new ideas, but from the ability to turn those ideas into hard, cold cash. Um, Edison was a mastermind at this. Mm. Yeah. And unfortunately, this was um, scored further by the fact that Tesla died a relatively poor man, yeah. while Thomas Edison died a millionaire. So oh. I think we just see that history was very unfair to Tesla as to compared Tesla. to Edison. <laughs> you know? Interesting. And one of Edison's enduring legacies, I guess because of the money, mm. is, um, isn't is like specific patent technology or technology or innovations, but this thing called invention factories. So the idea that he divided the innovation process into very small tasks that were carried out by other small, other um, legions of workers. Mm. And so for for instance, Edison got the idea um, for a moving picture camera um, or kinetoscope from a talk uh, by a photographer called Edward Muybridge. Mm. Mm. But then he left most of the experimentation to actually the people he had hired. So he didn't actually come up with uh, the, <laughs> the full thing, right? Mm. But by having multiple patents and invention, uh, inventions de developing in parallel, Edison in turn ensured that his assistants were able to sort of make money and uh, have a stable financial mm. situation. Yeah. And then it meant that they were able to continue running experiments and to continue innovating in this factory. Mm. So Edison invented modern innovation as we know it because you don't invent all the components of the thing that yeah. you're innovating, mm -hmm. you know, you sort of pick up different bits from people. Mm. Um, and so he had um, people working on similar technologies and that's how he ends up um, owning some of these patents because you used his invention factories. Mm. Um, then the other thing that came up in my research was the clash of methodology between the two. Yeah. So Edison wasn't as formally educated as Tesla was. Mm. Um, Edison relied heavily on um, tedious experimentation. And so for most of the discoveries, he would usually sort of put everything out there and tinker and sketch <laughs> and really be messy about his innovation process. Mm. In contrast, Tesla, who was, you know, emotionally driven, but also had years of engineering, yeah. um, allowed him to work out his theories sort of in his mind. And what allowed him to do this was something they call an edictic memory, mm. which meant he could very precisely um, recall small objects he could accurately visualize them in 3D. Wow. Um, and as a result, he could build these working prototypes mm. using very few drawings, yeah. um, mm. unlike um, Edison. Mm. And so he worked out his inventions mostly in his imagination, and it was very <laughs> fast for him to come up with things. In the <coughs> end, however, Edison, with his team of invention factories, had about 1,093 pat 
patents. Mm. Tesla, on the other hand, had about 300. Wow. And you can see why then he would die a very poor man. Yeah. But however, most recently, you said that there was this war of currents mm -hmm. um, in which um, Tesla came out on top with the AC um, current, mm. um, the alternative current. Yeah. In most recent times, we find that our computers, our machines, LEDs, electric cars are all running on actually direct current. Mm. Mm. And so, and they've also found, engineers have found that at extreme um, extremes of power when they're distributing electricity, um, the losses from a million volt transmission line are lower if it carries a direct current than the AC. Mm. So mm. they're trying to use that more. Mm. And then you find that the transformer again becomes the secret weapon in all of this. Yeah. Um, but this time it will operate on a DC, a direct current, mm. because direct uh, current transformers make it easier to integrate into wind and solar electricity into the grid, which is what we're all moving to towards mm. these, yeah. these re mm -hmm. um, renewable sources. Um, and they re also reduce the likelihood of uh, failures cascading from one electricity gen and electricity generation region to another. Mm. So you find that Edison may very well come out on, on top, top in the mm. most recent uh, wars. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so what happened to uh, Tesla and Edison after the War of the Currents? Mm. Uh, and, and that's what I'll talk about. We perhaps see that the fall of Tesla and the rise of Edison is, is, is pop partly attributed to Tesla being an inventor and Edison being an innovator. Mm. And I'll uh, touch on that a little bit. So Nikola Tesla was a prolific inventor. He didn't stop with the AC induction motor. And at his New York City lab, he nurtured a dream of distributing electricity wirelessly around the, wi the world. Mm. So Wi-Fi kind of electricity. In the 1800s. If, if, you, if you could call it that. Mm. And Tesla believed that either the Earth itself or the electricity charged uh, stratosphere could be used as a conductor. This is also what ancient Egyptians believed. And it is also uh, suggested by in history that this, this was part of what went into the architecture of the pyramid, uh, pyramids at Giza. Mm. Um, but he suffered a great setback in 1895 when his lab burned to the ground overnight, mm. most likely as a result of an accident involving the production of liquid oxygen. <laughs> so around the year 1899, he makes a comeback and he moves to an isolated space in Colorado, Colorado Springs mm. where he could conduct uh, a large scale uh, risky experiments aimed at powering the world through wireless electricity. So in Colorado, he built what he called a magnifying transmitter, a huge coil that could generate high electric voltage. Activating it sent huge uh, bolts of lightning up into the Colorado Springs uh, sky, we're oh, told, wow. testing the possibilities of sending electricity wirelessly throughout the atmosphere. <laughs> and it's said that those experiments would uh, wirelessly activate light bulbs in the ground at distances of as much as 26 miles away. This sounds very dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 yeah it, it was. Uh, but he, it, 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 he basically was proven correct. Uh, mm -hmm. The experiments were a success. And so he went back to New York, hoping for, uh, to receive funding for a new project, which he then dubbed Warden Cliff. Mm. Uh, but he wasn't so fortunate. It turned out that it was too grand an idea and far too ahead of its time. Mm. So he pursued that idea, but uh, rather unsuccessfully for about 17 years. And wow. eventually, as you said, he died a pauper at the age of 86 yeah. on January the 7th, 1943. His rival, Edison, <coughs> fared a lot better. Mm. Although the war of the currents also took its toll on him and he lost controlling share of his company, he managed to invent his way to success. Mm. Um, and three things differentiate him from Tesla. First, he was adept at inventing things which had a clear practical purpose. <laughs> Second, important. he focused on innovation rather than invention. Uh. And third, he you know diversified. He, mm. did, he was into the film business. Mm. He was into tires with Firestone and Henry Ford. Mm. He was into telegraphs. He was into so many things. Yeah. Mm. And so contrary to what many believe, Edison did not invent uh, things like the electric bulb nor the mm. telegraph per se. Mm. But yet these are things that, you know, earned him quite a bit in royalties. Yeah. So for example, for, for example, rather, Charles Brush is credited with making the first uh, big breakthrough in artificial light. Mm. And his system worked by electrifying two separated carbon rods. Mm. Uh, but Edison's bulb proved the superior concept. Mm -hmm. And that's why in 1822, uh, he succeeded in, in, in getting a patent after successfully uh, lighting up our power grid.
Uh, telegraphy was uh, developed and championed by Samuel Morse, and it enabled the immediate transmission of messages across long distances. With the knowledge of how the telegraph worked, Edison developed the stock ticker. This device was the earliest electrical dedicated financial communications medium transmitting share price information over telegraph lines. It mm. served uh, the world until the 1970s. Mm. Um, once again, as you can see, some ingenuity there in turning uh, an abstract idea into something very practical, practical and yeah, commercial. And useful. So at the time of his death, he was worth $12 million. Uh, at the time, that's uh, equi equal uh, to the modern equivalent of about 17 billion shillings, we are told. Mm. So to summarize, there are three, I think, noteworthy lessons uh, from the two. First, if you're a big, uh, big uh, picture problem solver like Tesla, I think uh, it's prudent to also focus on solving the immediate problems that might uh, rake you in some money. <laughs> uh, and number two, imitation is superior to invention. Mm. Uh, and innovation as well is probably superior to, to invention. Mm. And number three, when the facts change, you must change, change your, your mind. mind. Mm. And Fantastic. that's what Tesla didn't do. Fantastic. Mm. So on a day where we had a winning headline from the Na Daily Nation and a winning cartoon from the Star, I want to leave you with this. Anyone who thinks that the vice president can take a position independent of the president of his administration <laughs> simply has no knowledge of politics or government. You are his choice in a political marriage, and he expects absolute loyalty. Mm. Do you where'd agree? You, where'd you get that from? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Hubert <laughs> Humphrey. Mm. I see. So, so let us know if you agree, yeah. <laughs> given political the theory. prevailing <laughs> context uh, of, of Kenya. Um, but also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find us on TV. We're on GoTV, Pang Fita, and Star Times. Have a lovely evening.